done. We're back with another amazing podcast. Let me get this thing running. I used to do these things as just sound recordings, but now it's just shorter and more fun to do them as small PowerPoint presentations and just record my voice. Okay, let's go. Today we're going to be talking about one of the least known cryptids out there, the flying uh, chicken or reptile-like HMS Caesar sighting creature. And for this, I really have to thank my friend Cameron McCormick. Now, let's begin this thing. All right. Today's subject is the mystery of the HMS Caesar creature. But before beginning, we really have to thank my friend Cameron McCormick. He's a long time online friend and a long time ago now, almost 10 years ago, we also briefly met in New York, had some drinks. He's a really nice, cool guy. And, you know, one of my... Uh, closest friends in the cyberspace and he has a very well no he has a deep and amazing knowledge of deep sea animals deep sea related fortiana strange sea monsters in fact go check out any of these websites made and managed by cameron mccormick i even offered to promote his patreon account but he was so kind he said he didn't have any and he would just be happy with me uh, representing this amazing case on youtube so thanks to him and here you go my friend please follow cameron's online presence in these links and he's also a really nice art artist this drawing is by him it's on deviant art it's one of his reconstructions of one of the strange creatures dreamt up by hp lovecraft but okay let's go let's start with today's subject so it is this is the hms Caesar, a, a, an old-time steam-powered warship. And one day, when this, this ship was sailing in the Irish Sea, something amazing happened. A cryptid with a sea monster, which did not look like anything seen before or possibly after, emerged from the sea and leapt like 50 foot or feet or something, which is like more than 10, almost 20 meters, a huge leap out of the sea and what made it even more peculiar was that this creature had no wings no long legs or fins you know yet it was still almost airborne which is fascinating so here you see the sketch from the primary force primary source cameron has provided me a sketch of the extraordinary creature which admiral Anne trucher and his navigating officer saw from the hms caesar of the east coast of Ireland. And let's actually read this document. It says, In others, the sea creature differs structurally in many respects from Ophidians. Well, this is an article talking about sea serpents. In support of this, I am privileged to give below an account sent to me by Vice Admiral Robert H. Anstruter of the late of the Royal Navy of a strange sea denizen seen by him while in command of the HMS Caesar. And he says, I was the first watch when suddenly something shot out of the water right in front of me, about half a ship's length off, straight up into the air, about the height of the foremast, about 50 feet, which is amazing. It's as long as a truck. I actually measured feet because I think in meters. I, of course, had my Galilee glasses. He means uh, just binoculars had my Galilee glasses handy and quickly fixed them on the quadruped for a four-footed or at any rate four-legged beast it proved to be. In appearance, it gave me the impression of a skinned chow dog, such as one sees hanging up in the butcher's shops of Canton. This basically ref refers to skinned chow chow dogs that Chinese butchers used to have in front of their shop window sometimes so it's like a skinned little doggy with a tail but also it reminded the captain of a chameleon the head and the short tail also had a chameleon like appearance i don't know what he means by the head having a chameleon like appearance did it did it have the those like turret eyes the chameleons have or did it have the kind of helmet like projections we just don't know but captain goes on Captain Anstruter goes on. With outstretched neck and legs it fell, or rather dived, 
into the sea again. I had never seen such a creature before in all of my long experience at sea, so I hastily called the navigating officer to come to my end of the bridge in case the reptile or whatever one might call it should show itself again. No sooner had he got to my side than up it shut again and I had another good look at it. This time the navigating officer saw it as well. It did not appear to have scales but rather the shiny skin of a reptile. Now this is confusing because reptiles almost always have scales but I mean I guess this is what reptile means to this old captain. Its feet seemed to me like the clothes one sees in represented in figures of Chinese dragons. We waited and waited, but it never rose again. I did not hear or read of anything like it until some time later I settled in the ancient town of Rai, when I found that the arms of the town, as flown on its flag, consisted of three heads of lions and three sterns of ships, surrounded by three creatures called wyverns, which very closely resembled my acquaintance of the Irish Sea. Unbelievable story. Unbelievable creature. I mean, it's so fascinating that this animal is able to jump so high out of the sea, no matter, mind you, without any propulsive organs whatsoever. Maybe it was jet powered. Who knows? This is actually the original letter of the captain. It is uh, the same narrative we see here only a bit more brief and you know i was curious about this so let's say let's see what this old arms of rye look like you know maybe i can see the wyvern and to see what reptile it looks like so actually the, the old town of rye in east sussex i believe it's one of the most beautiful places on earth as far as i could see from internet pictures but, but it's really unbelievable really beautiful like a, imagine a charming town straight out of the Lord of the Rings, but on a seaside setting. And I, I just I just felt good thinking about good kinds of fish and chips they must all be having there. Lucky people. But anyway, the arms of the town look like this. It's an, another one of those amazing visual contrivances the British or uh, the British Islanders are famous for. It's three half, half ship, half lion things. There are also supposed to be three wyverns around it, those three dragons with wings. But I haven't been able to find any reference to those wyverns. So all I could find were these lions, but they're as cool, so here they are. But there are actually statues of wyverns in a place called Glind Place, which is an upscale noble mansion kind of place in East Sussex, which is not so far from the British side of the... Irish Sea, I guess. Well, it's close to the town of Rye. So maybe this wyvern kind of looks like those wyverns, which I couldn't find. But anyways, so maybe something like this, but with the smooth skin of a skinned dog hanging in front of a Chinese butcher's shop and the supernatural ability to leap extreme heights. So... By the way, all of these sources are provided to me by Cameron McCormick. I did some of the extra research myself, but please, once again, look up Cameron's page if you're more curious about these things. So responses were not uh, late. So right after this original letter appeared, someone else wrote back to the spectator, uh, commenting on the captain's incident, the captain's sighting. And he says, Mr. this is somebody called Mr. J. Esther Bacon. And he says, I was very much interested in the letter in your issue for my friend Admiral Anstruter with regard to the animal, whether mammal, reptile or fish, which he saw leap out of the sea to the height of 40 or 50 feet. Now, apparently these are a common knowledge, a commonly known animal in those parts. And he goes on to say, these animals are a well known, these animals are well known to the inhabitants of the wilder parts of the coast of Connemara, Mayo and Donangal and are known as Gorra Muloks. The inhabitants do not, however, often speak of them to visitors whom they know to be incredulous. As the creatures leap principally by night, they are not often seen. They can leap to a much greater height than that seen by your correspondent and woe to the be belated Gannet 
upon which they once set their eye, even though it be flying at a height of 100 feet above the surface of the sea. So these are like super like sea to air missile animals, apparently. And, and the reference of a gannet is also particularly interesting because gannets are birds that can dive from a great height into the sea. And once they're in the sea, they can actually continue swimming with their wings as if they were swim as if they were flying. They beat their wings and fly beneath the waves to sometimes great depths. So this creature is like an inverse gannet, the Gora Mulok. Oh my God! They follow it like a sleuth hunt, and when they get to within striking distance, launch themselves through the air, gliding by the aid of their large wing-like fins and guided by the swinging of their tail they strike it and bringing bring it down with unerring aim unbelievable description so now we know something more about these gora muloks apparently they're not just mere quadrupeds but they also have like wing-like four fins so okay so maybe these should be should have been painted larger i actually really want to paint this animal i couldn't do it for this podcast but I will probably later on. So maybe they look more like a wyvern. They look like a wyvern adapted for an aquatic existence. So maybe the legs would be splayed, the tail would be shorter, the head would be more aerodynamic. So maybe it would not have those ears or projections. It would be a smooth wyvern. But it's like some sort of like a tracking surface to air missile. It gets a lock and follows it in the air. Unbelievable. So another letter was quick on the heels of the previous letter. And this is by someone called Eleanor Ritchie. And he or she says, maybe she says, with reference to this subject, I think it may interest your correspondence to hear that the Garamulok, not Garamulok as spelled in your issue, is well known in parts of Wiltshire. I inherited one of these animals many years ago. And it has remained until recently as a treasured household pet, owing, however, to its unfortunate propensity for leaping in the air and chasing airplanes, which daily make their way from London to Bristol, it has had to be destroyed. Of course, this person is just pulling our leg here, and I think even this letter was kind of like a joke. And I wouldn't be surprised if Captain's original story wasn't some sort of tall tale, You know, maybe they have some sort of like even more rude story behind it. Like they were on the ship with their... Maybe he was actually trying to fool his uh, navigating officer. And they were joking around. And, you know, he would say something like, you would believe anything. And then it would be like a challenge. I bet I could get your silly stories to be published in The Spectator. And so it would go. I mean, nine out of ten times, I think all these cryptid rumors start this way it's like uh, tall tales told knowingly by someone for entertainment but you know this story is amazing it was our prized household pet Busty no (laughs) don't go after the airplanes again Busty how high do the airplanes fly thousands of feet probably but Busty would go on and because it was such a danger now it would have to be destroyed Find him and destroy him. <laughs> oh no, Basti, no. <laughs> My treasured household pet. Anyways, but this was not the last we saw of the Garamolok or Gorramulok or how did they spell it? Garamulok. Okay. So a few, few, few months later, in June actually, now it made the news in Ireland in the Herald Democrat and it says Ireland has found its own sea serpent of course these days 1920s they were not the best of times for Ireland you know they were having uh, a civil war if not uh, a seeding conflict with the British and you know it was a long long sad story so this newspaper has a Irish pride about everything it writes about so you know now Ireland even has its own sea serpent. Ah, not like those limp wristed limey, black and tan British sea serpents, I guess. Come out, you black and tans. Come out and fight me like a man. 
Show me how you won your medals up in the It was a nice song. I just remembered it. Okay. So it has an Irish name and fishermen insist that the sight of it is bad luck. This, this being the time for the annual crop of sea serpents, the public here is being regaled with a new one of Irish nationality. So apparently in the 1920s, there was like a whole fashion of sea serpent lore and news. So people, you know, people knew what this was. It was a kind of entertainment. Its Irish name is the Gorra Mulok. It can only swim and lash its tail in orthodox sea serpent manner. But reports from the west coast of Ireland, where it is alleged to have been seen frequently, credit it with the power of flight. Okay, so it's not no longer just a leaping serpent, it's a flying serpent. According to the inhabitants of the wilder parts of the coasts of Conan, Mara, Mayo and Donangal, and rem look, look how like blatantly these guys copy and paste each other's statements. That's how all the great writing was made back in the day. The Gora Mulok Frank frequently turns up for exhibition stunts, principally at night. How do you see it then? It is described as being shaped like a porpoise, 100 feet long. Unbelievable. So now in this retelling of the story, it's like a, chi a game of Chinese whispers or a game of telephone. With each retelling, the creature acquires new evolutionary characteristics. Now it's 100 feet long, so it's gigantic. It can fly. It's shaped like a porpoise now, so a giant airborne jet-powered dolphin, I don't know. Rushing through the water with the speed of an express train. Choo-choo! Occasionally, it would leap out of and forward over the water at a distance equal to its own length. So now, okay. When it fell back into the sea again, the splash was said to sound like the crack of a three-inch gun. Someone make a mod of this sound for Armory Forger. The fact that these creatures are not seen more often is because it is explained they appear principally at night. It is then that they go a hunting after the gannet, a sort of seagull. When they see one flying near the surface of the ocean, they leap out. Oh, okay, this is the same old story. With their large wing like fins guided by their vertically set tail to bring down the bird. So now we have more details. The fins are like wings, the, the tail is vertically set. So I don't know what this means, like an antenna. And it, although now it's a 100 feet long monster, now it can only leap 100 feet. So it cannot fly like the others. Because remember this first telling of the story, the creature's, creature was not so big. It was like a dog-sized creature, able to jump 50 feet. But now it's a 100 foot long leviathan. That can only leap its own body length. Okay. Sawa, make this as a playable unit for War Thunder, please. Unbelievable. Fishermen, curiously enough, consider the appearance of the Gora Mulok to be a sign of bad luck, though it has not yet been reported to be cannibalistic. There must be an in-joke in -joke here about fishermen or the Irish, I don't know. But there is another brand of sea serpent which they fear more as a sign of ill omen. This one is called the Baudry Moor. It is said to be a huge whale-like animal, so large and powerful that it chases whales for sport. According to local superstition, the sight of a Baudry Moor means certain ill luck for the man and the craft who spot it. If it's big enough to eat whales for sport, I guess you also have a bit of, bit of bad luck when you see such a huge monster. Anyways, so... With this article, it makes uh, it joins the pantheon of uh, Irish sea monsters, and like here, here is one more detail. Here we can clearly see as cryptids being folklore for the techno scientific age. We cannot believe in uh, headless man or centaurs as the ancients so freely used to be able to. So now we have to invent these like quasi zoological folkloric creatures but still they are not without their own sense of national or regional pride i mean uh, like uh, one common pattern i've noticed uh, is similar in the united states where every lake has a lake monster because 
every lake is a tourist destination for the white people who live there you know i mean there's it's a, it's an american joke that you know wild white people always go to the lake so when you go to the lake you have to invent those lake monsters tall tales for a new generation okay but this was not the last we saw of the gora moloch either i'm sure there are some more references i am missing this was just a lunchtime work of googling but it made its like guest appearance in a thrilling mystery story published in New Zealand in the Waikato Times as part of a serial novel by a certain Herbert Calway. The novel is called The Lady of Inishtara and I, I searched long and wide Inishtara. Maybe I thought it was like an obscure New Zealand place, but no. It's not some sort of Middle Eastern place either. It sounds a bit like Ishtar. So damn if I know where or what Inishtara is. If you know, please write in the comments. So this is a big long story and it's like a thrilling mystery story. Like there's a moody lady and someone kills someone or I didn't read it all to be honest. But there's one part in which the Gora Muloch makes an appearance. So it says... But didn't he run away because he thought he'd be killed by his brother? That's what was said by the people who were at the Nepertandi Inn, replied Brian slowly. Oh, I thought this was a lady. Sorry for the narration. But I have heard still another reason for his disappearance. Mary looked at him in surprise. I haven't much faith in it, went Brian. But the man who told me was pretty definite about it. He was a farmer from Connemara, the wild coast of Connemara, Mayo, and Donangal. By now, we've all memorized these three places. If you live there, please say hi in the comments. Hi to the beautiful, beautiful Irish Sea. Said his brother-in-law, who lives on the coast, had seen the Gora Moloch in that distance outside the Clubi, and what? Sea monster? <laughs> laughed Mary. Ah, look at this tot. Doesn't believe in monsters. What kind of a lady are you, Mary? I heard of that since I was a baby, but I never met anybody who has seen it. This is an ancient creature with wing-like fins, and it has been around the West Coast for centuries. There may be something in the old legend after all. I read it can reach 50 feet or more from the water to catch seabirds in flight. I don't believe it, declared Mary. So we can see this is a bad author because he is afraid of using the word said over and over again. When you're writing, you know, characters speak, obviously. So I'm cold, said Memo. I want a hot cup of tea, he said. Mmm, he said. The tea tastes really good, he said. And there's nothing wrong with saying said over and over again, you know. But if you're a bad author... You're somehow disturbed by this and use the occasion to showcase every Pambi Nambi word, you know. So here she's laughing and then declaring. Ah. But so anyways, that's just a side note. Anyway, so this is a side appearance by the Gora Mulok. Apparently Herbert Cl Calway, who probably is not such a great writer, read of these stories. He may be from this region. Or maybe it's very interesting to see this repeated uh, 10 or 15 years later in New Zealand all, of all places. But maybe there are a lot of uh, Irish settlers in that part of New Zealand or people who lived close to the Irish Sea. Beautiful place. This is a beautiful place, by the way. This whole, whole part of the world. So it's really interesting to see this animal in New Zealand out of all places. And, sorry, I got a silly, silly short message on my phone from one of those marketing companies. Anyways, okay, that's almost the last we saw, but no, actually it makes one more appearance in the Woodsworth Dictionary of Phrase and Fable. You must get this book if you're not, like, if you're interested in fantasy, science fiction, speculative evolution, you must get this dictionary. It's a dictionary of stories, strange creatures, strange lands quintessential guide to myth folklore legends and literature in fact there are a number of dictionaries of phrase and fable out there get them all they are great just 
live through them, you'll have a good day. So in this dictionary, the Gora Moloch is listed as a mysterious sea monster, well known to the coast dwellers of, drrr, you guessed it, Connemara, Mayo, and Donangal. Whether it's a mammal, reptile, or fish is not known, but it has large wing-like fins and is said to leap from the water to a height of 50 feet and more and catch the seabirds on which it feeds. Okay. So almost unaltered, it has uh, made its way into this dictionary. Probably originating from this captain's letter in 1920s. Unbelievable. So let's, tell, let's put our speculative evolution hats on and think what the HMS Caesar creature could be. I mean, there are a number of similar cryptids, and the, the most similar in terms of appearance is this one digited sea serpent. Uh, in fact, check my channel's videos, once again, helped by the great and inimitable friend Cameron McCormick. I made a big podcast about the digited sea serpent. This image is, has been drawn by Cameron himself. So this is like a chameleon-like animal that lives in the Sargassum Sea, which is out there in the mid-Atlantic. So basically what this is, is like it's some sort of sea reptile, but it has prehensile arms and legs, and it lives on giant sea wheat, basically, climbing about underwater. One of the most original designs for any creature, cryptids or otherwise. And it looks like, for all matter, the... Gula Mo Gorra Moloch could be a version belonging to this clade, but except for these uh, big gangly arms, it has flipper-like wings. So a bit like a flying version of this very same thing. It even has a tail. You would only need to take this and make it shorter and perpendicular to the body. What were they saying? And then change these limbs into wings Maybe give it more like chest muscles and a smaller head and you're set. I'm pretty confident this would be the most uh, logical explanation had either animals been real. Or maybe, maybe because of its high energy antics, you know, because it leaps 50 feet or more, it could be related to these uh, long-necked seals that people kept seeing or claim to have seen around various parts of the world. These are like more or less like your original seals, but they have longer necks and a more reptilian look about them. I mean, there are many, many, many things written about long-necked seals. Just go and Google them. You won't be disappointed. Great cryptids. So maybe this is a stockier, like a micro bully version of the long-necked seal with more uh, longer fins, that kind of look like legs or wings, I guess. But it's got far more energy packed into that tight micro bully frame of its. So it can leap out of the water and leap so high it could almost fly. So that's another explanation, maybe. It could be a turbo marine frog. Well, there's not much to be said about this, you know. The, the animal's description really looks like a frog with... In the first de description, you know, this thing go back 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 this thing really looks like a frog with a longer neck and some sort of a tail so maybe it's a straight up amphibian that has adapted for a marine existence and maybe it is warm-blooded maybe 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 <sighs> or maybe because of the wings and the tail and the, its overall leaping ability it could be related to the manta rays some giant manta rays do jump out of the sea and they jump for considerable distances. So maybe something like this, who knows? But heck, at the end, my guess is as good as yours. What do you think the Gorra Moloch really was? If you're from that part of the world and if you know similar legends, please let me know in the comments. If you have theories of your own, please also let me know in the comments. Let's solve this mystery together. And if you enjoyed this podcast, please support me on patreon.com slash cmkozaman. The link is in the description below. Please, any, any support you give really makes a difference. You know, I'm here researching all these monsters, these old uh, newspapers, and helping showcase the works of my friends. And for this, I accept not a single penny from YouTube. This channel is not monetized. I don't plan to monetize it. So I depend entirely on you, my friends. 
if you can spare a dollar i'd be i'd be so happy if you're already donating a dollar maybe you can consider like cranking it up to two dollars this month and then after you paid two dollars or five dollars for one month you could go back to one dollar again i don't know anyways long story short every penny helps thank you so much for watching this has been cm kozaman and the mysteries of the gura Moloch. have a nice day everyone goodbye